My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Mama Gump was a prophet, and that sets up today's topic. Uh, Mother's Day is just a few days away, so welcome to the Hollywood Blockbusters Mother's Day special. I am Joe Hollywood, and I am joined by Imaginal Speed. Hey, hey. Andrew Walker. Ciao. And George Johnson. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you guys are excited for today's topic. I don't know why I'm so excited about today's episode. Um, it's We've never done anything like this before. And so uh, with Mother's Day right around the corner, I, I thought, let's talk about movies, greatest moms, and a little bit later, movies, worst moms, which I think might even be more fun. Oh, yeah. Um, so what I did to get prepared for this episode is I kind of went down my list of my 100 favorite films. And any movie that jumped out at me that had a mom that had sort of a standout role uh, would end up on my list of uh, movie moms. And I put together my greatest moms first. Uh, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have about 12 of my favorite movie moms, and then I have about eight or so of the worst movie moms. Oh, okay, I was about to say content because remember what what they said in Harry Potter: terrible things, great, <laughs> <but> terrible. <laughs> and whenever I say worst movie moms, there's a couple of characters that immediately come to mind. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting to that. Uh, let's see. So one of my all-time favorite movies that's at the top of my list. This doesn't necessarily mean she's my all-time favorite movie mom, but this is definitely from one of my all-time favorite movies. This is a scene that involves this movie mom. Lorraine, Lorraine, what are you doing? I swiped it from the old lady's liquor cabinet. Yeah, well, you shouldn't drink. Mom, don't be such a square. Everybody who's anybody drinks. Jesus, you smoke too? Marty, you're beginning to sound just like my mother. That is such a great line. <laughs> From Back to the Future, of course. And the central story of Back to the Future is Marty McFly going back in time accidentally, running into his parents, and his mom develops a crush on her own son, they had a hard time selling this story to just about every movie studio in Hollywood. And thanks to uh, Steven Spielberg's intervention, uh, he convinced Universal to take a chance and created one of the greatest classic 80s films of all time. And I remember seeing this in the theater. This is one of those memories I have where I, I remember the emotions I went through sitting in the theater and as this unfolds and the mom developing a crush on Marty, I'm like, what is going on here? It was unlike anything I'd ever seen. And, of course, it's all happily ever after at the end. Um, but, man, when you're talking about uh, movie moms, uh, <laughs> Lorraine uh, is right up there at the top. And uh, such a crazy storyline, but a lot of fun. You know, we were talking, we, we brought that up. In the pitch, they said that the guy, the guys who wrote it, who uh, wrote Back to the Future, saying, I wonder what, you know, I saw a yearbook picture of my dad, and we went yeah. to the same high school, and oh, what would it have been like if I met my dad and all that stuff. In that pitch meeting, they never, <laughs> I never hear the part about, yeah, but what if your mom fell in love with you? Wait, wait what did you say? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I was just talking about meeting my dad. You know, but yeah. what about your mom? What if your mom wanted to be with you? Like, Dude, you're making this weird. I'm trying yeah. to pitch a comedy here. Yeah, and the first inclination, like when he, when he wakes up in the bed and she's like, you know, toweling off his forehead or whatever, and uh, he's like, where are my pants? And she's like, over there on my hope chest. And I, that's the first <laughs> inkling where you're like what did she just say what's going on over here and the eyebrow goes up so good so yeah. good uh, she calls him calvin <laughs> <laughs> now who was it uh i saw this somewhere maybe oh his family guy kind of poked fun at this so family guy did a, a little scene on there where george confronts lorraine and says i know what's going on and she's like what are you talking about and he's like our second child, Marty, who you insisted on naming after that boy from high school, <laughs> looks exactly like him. How do you explain yourself? And it's hilarious that Seth MacFarlane 
picked up on that and like yeah. included it, and I'm like, that's pretty darn funny because yeah. really, you remember what people in high school look like, don't you think yeah. that they would both remember Marty and go, why does our son look just like that guy in high school? If there would have been an uh, episode four, uh, fourth movie, that might have been uh, a, a running joke. <laughs> I, think. I mean, it, but it's the Hollywood magic. They show, ki- you know, they, they show someone as an 18 year old, then as as 31, their face is entirely different. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, at 31, they're Brad Pitt, but at 18, they're like some schlub. <laughs> and you're like, that doesn't happen. The pupil- <laughs> And that's the weird thing, too. When you think about DNA and genetics or whatever, they basically had Michael J. F- Fox play like his future daughter, future child, his ancestors when they go yep. back to the Old West. Yeah. They're not all going to look exactly like Michael J. Fox. But I mean, what's, no, what's the been... line? Take your brain out and put it under your seat? Is that yeah, what Yeah, that's said? what he says. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's George. That'll be on George's grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't think about it too much, but. So, yeah, uh, anything you want to throw in, Andrew, about uh, Lorraine as a great movie mom? Uh, you know, I, I never think of her as a mom in that movie just because I'm always so focused on Marty and everything else that's going on. But yeah. uh, in 1985, she she seems like she's just really frazzled. She, you can <laughs> tell she cares about Marty. She's probably not a terrible mom. She was but. she was channeling Roseanne in in the original version of how she looked like your your, yeah, your yeah. uncle Joey didn't get out, <laughs> yeah, yeah. crumpled hair and like she it looked like they they were basically um, the precursor to Roseanne. Yeah, yeah. She put on a little weight and everything. She's letting she's smoking. She's drinking. She's like, I don't like that girl. Yeah, I don't like the girl that you're dating. They don't do those kind of things. You know, one of the one of the criticism the movie gets, and I didn't really notice this for the longest time until someone pointed it out, but. Due to the events in Back to the Future, it kind of changes the fortunes of George McFly and Lorraine, and they come into money because he's a successful author. They still live in the same house, which is sort of odd. Yeah. So their symbol of success is a BMW in their parking, in their driveway. And it's like, really? They're going to come in all that money, and that's one of the few things that are going to change is a nicer car sitting in their hey, driveway. don't you talk <laughs> down about 80s Reaganomic <laughs> success. It was all about what you could show. That's to what you. it was all about. <laughs> and, of course, the Toyota. They got the Toyota in the garage. But I don't uh, care yeah. the foundation that's of your wealth funny. is paper mache as long as you show the flash and the dash. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if, you know, Marty causes these changes, and then he returns to the future, and they're living in a mansion someplace, and he has no idea where. And it's like. He goes back to this old house, and there's new people living there. So. Yeah, I'm going to borrow the George well, line. It's best not to think too deep about time. Because <laughs> we're like, what? He did go back to his old house, and there were other people there's in, a, in yeah, the yeah, second yeah. one. In the alternate timeline, yeah. Freeze. George, any final thoughts on Back to the Future? I got to I gotta admit that uh, when I saw the movie, you and you see that he's in the same car with his mom, it... It, it is strange because she is attracted to him, and there and that's one level. And some people can't get beyond that level. But there's a part of me that sat straight up in the in the movie theater and said, "I knew it. I knew this is what our parents keep telling us." And it was so it was so interesting because I thought that's going to be me at some point in the future, fat and you know frazzled and everything else. But um, I think it was it's one of those things that that they never put in movies and that is is your parents are total hypocrites they were oh, yeah, wild yeah. and crazy when yeah. they were young and yeah. then you get older and they they put on this front and i gotta be honest that moment i was what it come out in 85 i was 14 years old yeah i needed this i needed this then i needed to hear that I was like mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah i'm on you now this is this is proof of exactly. some kind yeah that this is that the, the, this has gone complete, completely crazy with parents pretending like they're so you know, polished and, and Christian yeah. and everything else. So, And, of course, nature steps in because when she finally does make her move on Marty while they're sitting in the car, that's when she has the classic line, kissing you is like kissing my brother. Yeah, and really, yeah. nature steps in with pheromones and all this stuff to prevent that very sort of thing <laughs> from happening. So, Kissing it, you is like right. kissing 50% of myself. I love the, the PTSD that Michael J. Fox conveys like he gets kissed. He's like, I can't erase this from my brain. Oh yeah, yeah the, I'll carry the this look in. on his face, and he's like, <laughs> Yeah. And I'm sure, I, and I'm glad he never told Doc that because Doc was always kind of just looking at Marty. Sideways. Marty, <laughs> you didn't run into you your mother, did you? <laughs> well, Doc, as a matter of fact, we made out in the car. <laughs> Marty, it's gonna have kind of cosmic uh, <laughs> something in the future. To... <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick kid, Marty. <laughs> You're a sick man. That's hilarious. 
<laughs> you, I'm not really being your own Einstein. <laughs> now, uh, moving on. Uh, a mother in a film uh, doesn't necessarily have to be a blood relation. Sometimes that mother takes on the role of the caretaker without necessarily being a blood relation to the person they're protecting. And not only uh, is this one of my favorite mom roles or maternal roles, um, but in my opinion, this is one of the greatest movie moments of all time and one of the greatest lines of all time. Yeah. Get away from her, you bitch! (laughs) (laughs) So here... Ripley, uh, Sigourney Weaver, you know, she's protecting this little girl who somehow uh, survived this alien attack uh, on her own. And uh, that's when Hudson says, why don't you put her in charge? Um, But she takes on that maternal role and protects her uh, to the point of putting her life on the line. And when when she confronts the alien queen in that that exoskeleton loading suit, I remember seeing that in the theaters. Like, I had to restrain myself from getting up on my feet and cheering out loud and watching her land blows with those with those claws or whatever and going toe-to-toe with the queen. In my opinion, that's one of the great movie moments of all time, man. Just great. What James, are your thoughts? James Cameron wrote the hell out of that role for, yeah. for Ripley because he channeled the fact that she lost her daughter because she was in cryosleep. So she she wakes up after the first Alien movie, and she's like, her daughter lived this life without her, and oh, she's yeah. heartbroken. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, well, she's oh. had them, but she's been a mom, and she never saw her child yeah. again. Yeah. So and then Newt is kind of a surrogate daughter. The chance to protect oh. to protect this child but, after the trauma that she's gone but through. But let me bring up another quote, or another thought, and that is: This is two mothers fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah the queen's because trying the queen's to protect lost her eggs all and, of her eggs by yeah, that point, yeah. and she's disconnected from this. The hatch sack. tube thing, yeah. yeah, whatever that thing's <laughs> the called. Egg sack, this, yeah. This big yeah, egg yeah. sack, which is a kid, I was like, man, I really would love to go through that. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it looks, it looks cool. <laughs> but no, it's, it's mother. George, get out of the queen's sack. <laughs> get over here. That's a drop. <laughs> Done. Yeah. No, but I thought that was interesting because you saw them both. One one has somebody who's still left alive. The other one's lost everything. The, the, the queen, yeah. the alien queen's lost everything. <laughs> And you know, See, now it, you're it, making me it. feel sorry for the queen all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, but George, George has a point. Their job is to survive. They have yeah. no, it, it wasn't personal. Like yeah. they said, look, you're here. You, this is how we reproduce. Yeah, yeah. You're what's for dinner. I mean, you're you're on the menu. And... <laughs> now, say what you will about, you know, James Cameron. I know people are critical of James Cameron. Uh, I remember someone said something. Uh, who was he married to? It was a director, fe- a female director he was married to. Well, and, uh, no, wasn't he dating Galen Hurd, or he was married to Galen Hurd? No, I'm thinking of another was, director. Was it was it the Zero, Catherine Bigelow I, or something? That sounds like, familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds familiar. And I remember someone said something to Catherine Bigelow, like, you know, you can deal with anything because you've been married to James Cameron. And I'm like, wow, what kind of person is James Cameron? And say what you will about him, he's created very strong female characters in films yeah. where a lot of people might not have cast a woman in the lead of Alien or the lead of Aliens, or, or he didn't do the first Terminator, Alien, but uh, the Terminator Sarah movies, Connor. the Avatar movies. Sarah he's Connor. He yeah. really has created really strong female characters. So I don't know what it's like to be married to the dude, but he's I mean, people even credit Rose movie. in Titanic, even though I hate her. Yeah, but <laughs> she's For what a great she did. character. Yeah, yeah. She threw away the diamond. So I'll never forgive her. <laughs> Ever. And she killed Jack. It's been 84 years. You don't get Oops. to murder Jack and throw away a diamond. You'll get that both. And a free ride. I, I know I don't get into it. It's just too painful. I know. <laughs> That's a whole other topic there. Uh, so, yeah. So, Ripley, one of my favorite uh, maternal figures uh, in film. Uh, speaking of, uh, I don't have a sound drop for this, but uh, uh, speaking of, uh, of, uh, Strong characters uh, created by Cameron. Sarah Connor, uh, Terminator yeah. movies. She wasn't so much a, a maternal figure in the first Terminator. She was mostly sort of this naive young female getting assistance, uh, trying to get away from the Terminator. But Terminator 2 was a completely different thing where all she cared about was protecting John Connor yep. and doing everything she could. Um, and luckily, the uh, the T, uh, T-800 was reprogrammed. Uh, to help them out, but uh, 
she that character, Sarah Connor in Terminator Two, played by Linda Hamilton, yeah. uh, is a great, great mother figure. Your thoughts? I'll gi- I'll give a tip of the hat to Lena Headey for the TV uh, version for the uh, oh, okay. Sarah Connor. Crown. She did a great job in that too. But no, Linda Hamilton was fantastic in that, and you see the depths that she'll go to to protect her son. Yeah, uh, it's just I mean you. Look, some some women's, you know, some moms were like, "I told you to brush your teeth and do all this." Like, I told you not to pull the pin on the grenade <laughs> until you count to four. <laughs> yeah. John. Now, one thing I'm excited about, uh, I already have this. Uh, hoping to do this in August, but uh, the Chicago Fan Expo is taking place in August, and the guest list is spectacular. And there's going to be several uh, cast members from Terminator, including Linda Hamilton. So I'm hoping to meet her and get something signed. Um, but they just announced, even though this is a little off topic, but on May the 4th, be with you, uh, the Chicago Expo announced, uh, Mark Hamill will be making a personal appearance. Whoa! So Fantastic. for me, that's a dream come true. Nice. So, wow, cool. but I am very excited to hopefully meet Linda Hamilton in August. So I'll report back if I'm able to pull is that Is it a off. dream? Cause I have, I remember certain conversations that, that we, we've heard about Mark Hamill and when people were standing in line and no one wanted to. Say hi to him. I think they were talking about Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. There, there was a story, and, and it was like, you know, I don't, you know, let's just, let's just don't, don't look at Mark Hamill. Just focus on Harrison Ford. <laughs> make conversation with him in line. Well, that's what one, when I when I mentioned on Facebook that Mark Hamill is going to be there. A friend of mine said. Uh, I wouldn't drive to Chicago for Mark Hamill, but I would drive for Harrison Ford. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, Harrison Ford's a big deal. But uh, come on, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. So. All right. Now, this next character uh, might be at or near the top of my list as far as favorite movie moms. I think because in some ways she reminded me of my mom a little bit. Um, But here's a little clip from the film. My kid brother looked like a tick about to pop. (laughs) (laughs) What is it? What is it? Put your arms down when you get to school. (laughs) The mom in Christmas Story, I don't think they ever give her a first name. They just call her uh, Mother Parker. Uh, I don't even think the dad had a first name in the the movie. But yeah, he never, I don't think he ever said his. Yeah, it's the old man. The old man, and yeah. But, um, you know, that father and mother in Christmas Story is they're just so, so typical of parents, not necessarily from that era. The movie's set in 1940, I think. Um, but man, there's a lot of things that happened in that movie that reminded me so much of my childhood. And I remember one thing my mom would do for Christmas every year is we'd open up all our gifts, you know, we'd get all the gifts we asked for. And we'd kind of be winding down, like ready to fall back asleep. And then she'd say, oh, I forgot there's some more gifts in the closet. And so there was this like second wave of opening smaller gifts and stuff. And that's what came to mind when, you know, when the dad in A Christmas Story is like, what's that behind the desk? And there's the gun, the BB gun. And so there's a lot in that movie that reminded me of my childhood growing up. And so I really have this uh, fondness for... uh, for Melinda no, she's, Dillon's she's, she's uh, portrayal. an amazing character. And I just to touch on what you just said, you know, that was the dad that had the cool present. The mom made him wear the <laughs> the pink the, the pink yeah. nightmare from the, from the aunt. That's right. <laughs> Looks like a deranged Easter bunny. Yeah, the deranged, you know, that's the thing. So I'm like, all right. No, no, but she's a she's a wonderful character. I mean, the thing when she gets when she gets uh Schwartz in trouble. Oh, you know, on the do phone. You know what? You know what you know what your son just said? <laughs> like, you probably heard it from his father. No, heard it from your son. Yeah. It's like the best on, on-screen on beating I've ever heard. And you've never seen it. <laughs> right. Just let your mind <laughs> imagine. You, you see her whisper into the phone, but you don't hear what she says. Yeah, yeah. And then you hear the, wow. the screeching on the other end and And slapping. the kid doesn't even know what he did. He's like, what did I do? <laughs> smack, 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 smack. And it, it, that's one of, you know, that's a great call. I completely forgotten about the Christmas Story Mom. Yeah, and, and you know what's kind of funny is my mom was from Spain, and she had this thick Spanish accent. And what's kind of ironic is probably well into my 20s, I never swore, never said a bad word. My mom had a mouth like a sailor. My <laughs> God, the stuff she would say. And the funny thing is, is in Spain, 
you know, they're a little bit more free about sexuality and nudity and all this stuff. So when it came time to go to the movies, go to the dollar show, it didn't matter what was playing. She's like, we're going to the movies. I saw stuff I should not have seen as a seven-year-old, eight-year-old, nine-year-old. I'm like, oh, so that's what those look like. Um, boy, oh, boy. But, yeah. That I, looks I, like a squid's eye. <laughs> You got him. <laughs> we, not we, see that we've coming. lost cabin pressure. <laughs> That's hysterical. You know, it's funny. I think that the mother from uh, from a Christmas story. I think one of my all time favorite moms. It doesn't make my maybe my top ten list, but there's a movie in the '80s that you don't see much because of the because of the. Um, because of the reference to suicide, but it's called Better Off Dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And the mother, mm-hmm. to me, seemed a little bit aloof <laughs> and kind of crazy and funny and, and just kind of in the middle of everything. Maybe a little bit from, from the mother from Christmas Story, although I think the Christmas Story, she was had, she had a little bit more control than the mother. The mother in the, <laughs> in the 80s was just completely bonkers, but she'd be vacuuming while her son was, like, hanging from a cord, and she's like, mm, you know, and she doesn't says, well, how was your day today? <laughs> Beth broke up to me. Huh, well, that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but, um, they just have their blinders She makes French bread, French dressing, French fries, and to, <laughs> and to drink Peru. <laughs> now, one interesting thing is on my list of best and worst movie moms, I have some actresses that are on the list multiple times. Uh, what other... Major major film, big box off, big box office success was Melinda Dillon in that she also played a mom to a little boy. Any thoughts? It was in the eighties also? Uh, actually, this would be the seventies, seventy seven. Spielberg, oh. Spielberg movie. Oh, uh, Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Oh, okay. yeah. yes, where she's, yes. she's grabbing him, but he's getting sucked out. Pulled through the, the doggy door. door. The dog door. Yeah. Oh, taken away that. by the UFO. That's I, Melinda Dillon, okay. same actress. For years, wow. I thought, would my mom do that for me? Would she <laughs> grab my, and would she be able to pull me in? Because yeah. I always had worries that my mom was too old to, like, pull me back. <laughs> <laughs> but talk about a dedicated mom. I mean, yeah. she went all the way to Devil's Tower yes. to retrieve her son from the aliens so yes. uh so she's on on my list twice uh so yeah yeah great great movie moms there uh another great movie mom you know what's funny i don't have a sound drop for this because i just couldn't decide which one to use there are so many good lines in this movie um but next on my list is ellen griswold from the vacation movies uh she was fantastic yep. in those movies uh, loved her in the first vacation, even more so in Christmas vacation. The other, the middle one, uh, European, European vacation yeah. or Vegas vacation, I didn't really care much for those. Um, but the first one and Christmas story, I thought she really, really shined in Christmas story. Yeah. She was great in yep. that. Um, so, yeah, that's number five on my list. Your thoughts on Ellen Griswold? Ellen Griswold, I, you know what? She, yeah. That, that that's like one that that that's quit, that's Ameri- slice slice of Americana right there. Yeah, especially on the, the road on, trip, family on the road, road trip. trip, and then yeah. in Christmas, yeah, in the Christmas one, that's that actually for me that stands out. I know the first one gets the most love, but yeah, because then you got all the family to show up. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. saw you got to see the all Christmas. staying under one roof during yeah. the holidays and the stresses that go along with that. No, and then the daughter's a little bit more. She's more of a teenager now at this point too. Yeah. So no, uh, Ellen Griswold. Yeah, I try not to remember too much of Vegas because they start to put Wayne Newton in there and start taking a weird turn. I was like, all right, okay, now. Yeah. No, Ellen Griswold. Yeah, that's. Yeah, no, that, that she's right up there with with Christmas Story, Mom. Yeah, for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think she's great. Uh, she you can tell she loves her kids and yeah. she supports uh, Clark even with all of his zaniness and far fl- far. Fl- Fetched ideas. <laughs> I almost said Fletch. And that's kind of connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and she even supports him physically. Physically, yeah. And, you know, doesn't want his stuff to get blown off when the when the SWAT team comes. You're, in. you're reading my mind because that scene is so subtle, but it's so yeah. hilarious. When she, she, the SWAT team comes in, they go freeze for some weird reason. When they're told to freeze, her hand is on his crotch. <laughs> she extends it to shake somebody's hand, then <laughs> returns it to his crotch. She was supposed to be freezing. I don't know who came up with that. I don't know if she came up with that, but that is so subtle, and it is so funny. And if I remember correctly, like, they made sure that there was a sound effect of, like, 
<laughs> yeah, <I laughs> when it goes back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was <laughs> awesome. That, that that entire scene, because that, that ends with the the cop coming in and is like, oh, of all the lousy ways to save a buck, that's pretty cool, mister. If I had a rubber hose, oh, was, I would beat you. Beat you. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was great. Yeah. George, any any memories of the vacation movies uh, in uh, Mama Griswold? I absolutely loved uh, va- the Christmas vacation. Um, I, I just think that um, it, it correctly shows how a mother really tries to hold a family together no matter how crazy. You kind of already touched on this, how, cra- how crazy the husband is. And Clark Griswold does go off the deep end. And she's running around trying to make things happen. Yeah. Um, along those lines... Well, I might be spoiling it, but um, Home Alone is kind of a parallel to me, a kind of a parallel universe there. And yeah. so I don't know if she winds up, the, the mother from, from Home Alone, on your worst, but um, the two of them are kind of Christmas movies, and you yeah. see the mother trying to keep keep everybody together and, and hold down Christmas and the importance of Christmas. Mm-hmm. And I just love that. I just yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. So oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, I'm wondering, I'm going to throw out a name at you, and I... This is, you know, as I do some research and compile my list, I come across little tidbits where I'm like, really? I did not know this. Uh, I'm jumping over a couple because we already talked about them. But I'm going to throw out uh, Mrs. Davis is the name I guess she's credited with. I had no idea that her last name was Davis. Uh, She was, now this might give it away. She was voiced by Lori Metcalf who was Jackie on the Roseanne show and has done some other things. So her name's Mrs. Davis. She was voiced by Lori Metcalf. Any idea who I'm talking about here? What year did this come out? The movie came out in 1995. I am referring to... Oh, oh, yes. I was just going to say Toy Story. Toy Story. Yes, yes, yes. Andy's mom, who I've... That's what I've known her as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, the family name is Davis, which I had no, no idea. Yeah, I didn't either. And uh, that character was great in Toy Story and the sequel and everything. And uh, so, yeah, no sound drops there. But I just have Andy's mom on my list. Uh, along the same lines, Pixar, I got Helen Parr yeah. from The Incredibles. Oh, I swear that's, to God, that's Joyce. my favorite. She's my, that's yeah. one of my, really? top, okay. my top five favorite movies of all time. Well, what's and cool? I love, I love Mrs. Incredible because yeah. you think this is all about, um, uh, what's his name? Parr. Uh, darn it. Yeah. My favorite uh, movie. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Anyway, yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Jack Parr? But oh, that's we'll little call Jack. Mr. Jack. Incredible. Yeah, yeah Mr. Mr. Incredible. <laughs> but he's out living his dream and having a great, great old time, and she's stuck at home. Well, I mean, he kind of, he kind of gets sick of his job because he's doing all these crazy things, and he goes off. And at a time, that came out at a time when I had four kids, and they were all young, and I I identified so much with Mr. Incredible, and my wife identified so much with Elastigirl <laughs> that we absolutely loved it. And there's a backstory where they fall in love, yeah. and they're together, and she's got her hands around the table, and she's holding the two kids, and she's yelling, you, Bob, his name's Bob, 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 Bob yeah. you've got to engage, you've got to engage. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, and the voice of her is uh, Holly Hunter. Holly Hunter, thank you. Great yes. Holly Hunter. And she does a phenomenal job. Yeah. And then she has to come and save him. Yeah. And that's even better. And she tells the kids, she gets them ready, and she can't use your power. I just, I could go on and on about it. It's one of my favorite movies, but yeah. I love the fact that she has to hold the fort down. Yeah. She suspects him of cheating. Then she has to go out and save him. <laughs> and yeah. ugh, while, awesome. while keeping the kids safe. Keeping yeah. the kids safe. And she finally see, she finally sees him, and she slaps him i think and he's like i'm just i'm just happy you're alive (laughs) now here's the cool thing probably i don't know if this is a world record or not but the amount of time that passed between the incredibles and the incredibles 2 was what years or 15 years 18 years something nuts went by and the cool thing about the sequel which is fantastic uh, mm-hmm. Is that it? Now this one revolves around Helen Park. Yes, where she becomes like the breadwinner, and yeah. he's at home Bob's taking at care home. of the kids. And it's so Love cool that. to take those uh, those tropes, those family tropes, and put it on this superhero family. But really, they're just a typical American family where he's fallen on hard times, so she becomes the breadwinner. It's a fantastic sequel, I one of the that. greatest sequels ever made, yes. I think. 
Yeah. I love 100%. Edna. I love that. I love Edna Mode. She has the maternal cap- cap- capability. She she helped the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, darling. I love him. The baby and I are one. We know I love other. the fact she goes, my God, you're fat. Come in. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. That's uh. awesome. Now, like I said, I do have some uh, actors uh, more than once on my list. Holly Hunter is on my list twice. I do have a little sound drop here. Now, this might be a little obscure for some people. Maybe some people might not recognize this right away. But um, this is one of my all-time favorite comedies. Maybe top 10, top 20. But Holly Hunter is in this one as well. These were the happy days. The salad days, as they say. And Ed felt that having a critter was the next logical step. But the doctor explained that her insides were a rocky place where my seed could find no purchase. (laughs) Then one day... The biggest news hit the state since they built the Hoover Dam. The Arizona Quince was born. But we thought it was unfair that some should have so many while others should have so few. If you haven't seen Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona, Nicholas Cage. Please do me a favor and watch Raising Arizona. Yes. I I probably would not even be aware of Raising Arizona if a former boss of mine that I've worked with we would recommend movies and stuff back and forth. And he's like, you ever see Raising Arizona? I'm like, I don't even know what that is. I think it's Coen Brothers, isn't it? I, I think, think so. It's, yeah, it's uh, John Goodman, Holly yeah. Hunter, Nicolas Amazing Cage. Who cast. Amazing yeah. cast. Amazing cast. That's, like, so. that's the only Coen Brothers movie I haven't seen. Oh, man. <laughs> Where's that list? Where's that list? <laughs> I, mean, it's, um, I got pages ever, and pages and ever pages. Ever-growing list. <laughs> at, the, at the suggestion from my boss, I watched Raising Arizona and – was shocked at how hard I laughed throughout that film. The writing, like when he says, you know, her insides was a rocky place where my seed could bear no fruit or whatever it was. I'm like, this is genius. This is written so well. And Holly Hunter is so amazing. Where the two of them, and this, I think this is one of Nick Cage's greatest roles ever. But when they go, well, that family's got five. They won't miss one. Like that <laughs> premise is hysterical. And if you haven't seen Raising Arizona, please do. That's kind of what we hope with this podcast is maybe we'll talk about a movie you've never seen. Uh, check out Raising Arizona if you get a chance. Yep. Nick, have you seen it? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, I, I saw it when it first came out. That's why when you when I played it, I was like, I know this. <laughs> my God, is that kid? Oh, my God, it's Arizona because he talks about you know, Arizona yeah. being born. It's Raising Arizona. When he's, he's robbing the store with the pantyhose on <laughs> his head. He's like, son, you got a panty on your head. And he's like, I'll be taking these huggies and whatever cash you might have. You know, it's not just for the audience <laughs> benefits. For my now, you know, I have not. I can. I, I'm going to revisit Raising Arizona. I have love not that seen movie. that. That is. Such I have a it wild. on DVD at home. It's part of my collection. Absolutely love it. And Holly Hunter, our second movie on the list. Um, I'm going to throw out another one again. This is, this is kind of obscure, but this is one actress who. Basically, any anything she's in, she steals the entire movie. I'm not sure if you guys will recognize this at all. Privacy in your own home with a whole goddamn bag of Oreo. Oh, stop that, you goddamn baboon. No respect, no privacy. <laughs> That is Ruth Gordon. Yes. Do you guys Ruth remember Gordon. Ruth Gordon? Little old feisty lady. I think she was in Harold and Harold Maude. and Maude. Was she that? Yeah. Yeah. With she, Bud Court. Yeah. One of my she favorite movies. Just Love that great. movie. I saw her in an episode of Columbo where she was amazing. Uh, and she stole these. Uh, this one was uh, Every Which Way But Loose. They did a sequel, Any Which Way You Can. I just recently revisited uh, Every Which Way But Loose, and she every time she came on screen, Still you, you couldn't get up and go to the bathroom or anything. You had to watch her. She was hysteric. <laughs> Throughout the movie, she, had, she kept trying to get her driver's license at like 80 years old, and they kept saying <laughs> no. And so the, the sub-thread of the movie is her going to different DMVs trying to get her driver's license and then she starts <laughs> wow. flirting with this old guy it, it's it's just awesome and that kissing scene that we had here we were talking about great kissing moments earlier uh that's her kissing the orangutan clyde and uh every which way uh you can or any which way you can whatever it's called um but yeah she ruth gordon is amazing she yeah. she was just a, a firecracker in the 70s um, and then here's my last one on uh, my greatest mom list, and then we'll go around the table a little bit. 
but this one, uh, this one kind of gives me goosebumps. And this isn't so much her speaking, but these are lines I wish I could say to her. What is it you want, Barry? What do you <sighs> want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, Mary. I'll take it. Then what? Am I talking too much? Yes. Why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? How is that? <laughs> Why don't you kiss her instead of talking her to death? Want me to kiss her, huh? Oh, youth is wasted on the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> that, of course, uh, well, that's that's the great Jimmy Stewart, but he is talking to Mary Bailey, played by Donna, Donna Reed. Reed yeah. And I remember the first time I saw It's a Wonderful Life, I madly fell in love with Mary Bailey, Donna Reed. I blame her for being single today because no woman I've ever met has measured up to Mary Bailey. Wow. So I blame her. Uh, That's a magical man. That's a magical man. man. Love that movie. Now, the bulk of the movie is a young Jimmy Stewart courting, uh, you know, Mary Bailey. But eventually she becomes a mom to Zuzu and the kids. So that's why I put her on this list. But she is one of my all-time favorite movie moms. Man, And, and, and she her. puts up with the fact that he hasn't made a whole lot of money, that they never leave town. And she she's raises the kids. always there for him. Yeah. Always there for him. Yeah. And um, the worst part of that is where you see her as a school mom or as a librarian or something yeah, yeah. later on. And she looks at him and she doesn't recognize him. And all of the life and the sweetness and the cuteness as if nobody else would have picked her up. Yeah. Like, what? no. I mean, it wasn't just Jimmy Stewart who would have been, like, absolutely after her, but everybody else. Yeah. But somehow because Jimmy Stewart didn't fall in love with her, the universe lost this enormous void or something. Or it just yeah. created a void and she never found her pee in the pod. Yeah, and I'm so glad you brought that up because it, it gives uh, a reason to talk about fate and destiny. Like, if she wasn't going to fall in love and marry George Bailey, there's no one else in the universe for her, and so she grows up to be a spinster or whatever, even though in the movie she's probably 23 years old. <laughs> but, uh, but to me, when I see that, when I see her with the glasses and looking, you know, kind of frumpy, that tells me that George was her destiny. And yes. So that's yes. what I love about I love that, that so, too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So your thoughts on Mary Bailey? Well, first I want to comment that uh, one of the benefits of the show is that we like to entertain and educate people to see movies, and uh, occasionally we all get to be put on the therapist couch, so we, can, <laughs> <laughs> we unwind little pieces of the show. <laughs> now there's, there's little things that start to make sense. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's why, okay. No one can ever measure, measure up to Mary Bailey. Fair <laughs> enough. No, uh, it's either her or Jessica Rabbit. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Jessica yeah. Rabbit, I think, is a little bit more attainable. It's a little bit more My realistic. God, man, your but. standards, your standards are up on Mount Olympus for God's sakes. We can't even see them. I mean, fair enough. I mean, you're competing against Roger and you know and George. I, mean, I know, I know, it's tough. Don't do this to yourself, Joe. But no, Mary <laughs> ba Mary Bailey is yeah, she's right up there. I, I mean, Christmas, you know. Watching It's a One for Life is almost mandatory, yeah. as far yeah. as I'm concerned. It's it's one of those things, if you don't do it, Christmas doesn't feel right. Yeah, You can say, like, well, I've seen it a thousand times, but then you get closer to, you know, it's 8 o'clock p.m. on Christmas. I'm like, I haven't seen, a, I haven't seen It's a One for Life <laughs> right. yet. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta find it. I gotta, yep. I gotta see it. Oh, there yep. he is. Yep. There yeah. we go. And now, if we're, if we're talking greatest movie moments, like I talked about that during the Aliens clip, in my opinion, one of the greatest movie moments is when George and Mary are sharing that candlestick phone. And I think Sam Wainwright is on the phone and they have to both put their ear up against the phone to hear them. And so they're kind of yes. like cheek to cheek. So cute. And as, as you hear Sam on the phone, you sense that tension between George. Chemistry. I got goosebumps thinking about it. That is such a great movie moment where that's where they finally sort of give in to those feelings that they've had. And it's such an awesome moment, man. It's great. Uh, I love that scene, yeah. And I yeah. think Jimmy Stewart gets mad, and he walks out, and he tantrum and everything, and you know he's in love. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, so I, great. It, you know, Joe blew through most of my list, but I'm thankful that he <laughs> left me a couple of ones, and he left me <laughs> one at least that Put I'm really happy for. a lot of thought into this. Right, yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, What look, you got? You know, we could say that great minds think alike, but sometimes I just think, man, am I just lazy, or what's going on here? <laughs> no, but uh, Maria from... Sound of Music, even though she's a stepmom, 
Yes, very she good. Filled in the role, and I remember because it was Julie Andrews, and you talk about having a crush when you're little. I'm like, it's Mary Poppins, and she's real now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what's going on? Yeah, you know what's interesting. You you mentioned I never even thought about that. That Mary Poppins and Maria are very similar in the fact that they're not the maternal mom, yeah. but they take on those oh, maternal yeah. roles and you know change these children for the better. Keep in mind, I was six and I had a real difficulty with i'm like cartoons are real and that's real too <laughs> so i'm like yeah it's the same person they're not they're not oh, one's an actual real person based off of history i'm like oh, oh yeah fair enough no I, that's a great pick maria yeah yeah no she's she's up there and then some of the other ones i i i have uh i i loved uh all the moms in hidden figures from okay. from taraji p henson and janelle monet and octavia uh octavia spencer i mean they the mom the how they balanced their role is in, in the workplace and, you know, confronting racism and and sexism. And uh, I, I thought that was great. Uh, there were a couple of, you know, we were picking moms and you have a worst list. I don't know. If, I can't really put her on the worst list, but this might come up later. Uh, Sophie from Sophie's Choice with Meryl Streep. Oh. Because <laughs> some people are like, she's a, she's a horrible mother. I'm like, is she though? No. I mean, it's, you really feel for yeah. her. Yeah, you really feel for her and she has to. And everything that happens after that is, did she make the right choice? Well, it's a catch-22. Yeah, it's you, damned if you do that. You, you have to save one, you have to give the, the other. And, and she has to live with those consequences, and it's miserable. And she was miserable after that because of, you know, she she, she came to America, and, you know, they talk about, her, you know, the, the Kevin Klein played the hell out of that role. Oh, I loved Kevin Klein. That was fantastic. <laughs> and just at the, at the end of the movie, I'm watching this, I'm like, why did I, this is ridiculous. Like, I watched this movie, I was like, I think I was 17 at the time, I'm like, the sun will never come up again. <laughs> I'm like, hey, why did I watch this in June? Yeah. The summer's gone. What I, is this? Who made this movie? Why? Here, exactly. Now, you got me thinking. I don't know how similar this is, but I think the metaphor is similar. Have you ever seen a movie? I think it was called The Good Son. And I can't remember the actress who played the mom, but I think the one son was Elijah Wood. The other one was Macaulay, Macaulay Culkin, Culkin yeah. who wasn't necessarily uh, a, a, her biological son. I think it was a nephew or something who came to live with them. And there's that moment where they're both dangle, being dangled off a cliff, and the mother has each yeah. one, and she can't pull both up, so she has to make a choice. Oh, and she pulls up her non-biological son and saves him and lets her <laughs> biological, who was just a monster. Her her biological son was a monster, but lets him fall to his death and saves Macaulay Culkin. I mean, right? there are a couple of movies that whenever I watch them, I, I'll probably go and just hug my mom. Forrest Gump is one of them. That mm -hmm. that part with Sally, you know, near the end when she's when she's about to uh, pass away, oh, yeah. that always gets me. <laughs> and I'm like, I gotta look my mom. <laughs> There's that one line, boy, your your mama sure cares about your education. <laughs> yeah, oh and I'm yeah, like, I'm like, and he's like he's like fanning himself. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. And then and that then what the little kid says mother. back is yeah. terrible. <laughs> yeah, I watch him like, oh, oh wow, that cares about her son. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Mama Show does care. I love that. <laughs> Anyone else on your list? No. Did we I'll, cover yeah. the gamut? Oh, no. Uh, on my on my list, then I would also. I had um, Kate Baker from Cheaper by the Dozen, played by the wonderful Bonnie Hunt. I, ah, I had oh, a, she's great. Yeah. I had a crush on Bobby, uh, Bonnie Hunt for a little while. I was yeah. like, she's amazing. I just saw her recently. I watched uh, Jumanji recently. Yeah. She was great in that. That's yeah. when I, that's actually when, as, when I first saw her in her first role. I was like, you are wonderful. You are a wonderful actress. Oh, I love her. Yeah. And Bonnie's then fantastic. when I saw her in Super Cheaper by the Dozen with Steve Martin, I was like, this is, this is great. I got to watch this. Yeah. No. Now I'm trying to remember. I haven't seen that in a long time. That's like a blended family story. Where no, no, they have. That's oh, their, they have that's, all those biological. Those children. are all their kids. And okay. I went, wow, you were busy. Because that's kind of a, a yeah. Hollywood uh, trope, I guess. Is a husband or you know a widower and a and a widow each yeah. have kids from other relations. They come together and have this blended yeah. family. You see that quite a bit in movies. I think Lucille Ball was yeah. in, maybe Desi Arnaz was in the movie Yours, Mine, and Ours or something where they have a blended family. Uh, so, yeah, you see that over and over again. But, yeah. so There, there was a movie that I saw, I want to say early 2000s, and a friend of mine turned me on to it. It was called Sounder, and it had Rebecca Morgan. And it was uh, played by Cecily Tyson, and she plays a, um, an African-American woman, a mom, who has to keep the family together when her husband tries to go out and get a job and earn money and gets picked up by the, arrested by the police and taken away to prison. And so it's basically her struggle, how she goes through it. And I went, wow, 
this is kind of I mean, it was a wonderful performance. I just mm-hmm. I'd never seen something like that. And I remember that kind of stood out to me when we, when we were talking about Mother's Day. And then that's also more along the the drama heavy thing like around uh, the other one is Terms of Endearment where uh. I go, go Shirley MacLaine and Deborah Deborah is like don't hate can you, can you, I know you hated me for the last two years. I'm like slap that boy. And I love that she slapped him later. <laughs> Shirley <laughs> slaps him later. I'm like, "Yeah, you deserve it, you little shit." <laughs> I was getting irritated with that kid because there I sometimes I was like, "Yeah, you know, I, I was kind of a brat too." So I'm like, "Yeah, maybe that I needed one of those growing up. <laughs> Hug your mom a little more." You know what's funny? Just sitting here watching you get riled up <laughs> describing this movie. That's that's someone who loves movies. When I when I discuss a movie and I, all the emotions come back as I describe the movie, you reminded me of me watching you describe that movie. Too. Yeah, I mean, but th- that's my list. I mean, there are a couple others. You know, I think of Evelyn from Everywhere, Everything, All at Once, and I go, yeah. "Wow, you know, she could, she had trouble accepting her daughter, and then she goes on the most fantastical adventure." Which I guarantee you, if any one of us pitched that story, I'm like, <laughs> no going, they're like, "Get out of my office! I don't yeah. do this sci-fi <laughs> crap." It, well, it wouldn't take you five minutes; it'd take you twenty. Yeah. yeah. And by that time, you've lost everybody. I mean, that took a great leap of faith. Yeah, and I exactly. love I even movies that are crappy that take huge amounts of chances. Yeah. I, I, I give them another two or three stars in my head because I just love that. Yeah. That one, yeah. it pulled it off. Yeah. They, and, they, it, and I think you're right. Had they have pitched that any other any other way to any other people, I don't know that they would have taken it. It would have sat on the shelf. Yeah, you just pitched that on its face. Like, yeah, we're talking about multiple diven- uh, dimensions and multiple universes, and there's the alpha thing. You know, wait, what are you talking about? But then you yeah. see it in execution, and you go, yep, here are the golden statues. Yeah. Now, I agree with you, George, in that I'm always looking for something new and different. And we've said on this podcast many times, I'm tired of the prequels and the sequels and the reboots and all that. Yep. And so anytime anyone says, well, here's an original movie you haven't seen before. Like you said, even if it's not great, at least it's somebody trying to give us something new. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I have one last thing. I know you'll go to your list on the worst, but I want to nominate her now. Uh, uh, Padme Amidala, for Na- or Natalie, played by Natalie Portman. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, she, she's on the list. I don't care. She gave up. You have Star Wars medical technology, and they said for reasons we can't explain, she's even like, lady, you better survive. You have yeah. two kids. You are not leaving right now. Oh, you left? Uh, okay, that's great. You got yeah. a rebellion to lead. Thanks, by the way, for that. I remember <laughs> I remember seeing a video somewhere where it's like. You're a harsh <laughs> critic. That's good. Yeah, I just, I was so angry. Yeah, yeah. I know. It, was no, it made no sense to me. I, I saw a spoof or something where the, they're, they're like, she's just lost her will to live. And then someone looks confused and goes, you did tell her she had twins, right? <laughs> yeah. Why Why would she lose her will to live? So that's a big Is it robot chicken or me. something that yeah. you saw? Uh, <laughs> something like that. But it really doesn't make any sense that there's no medical reason. She just willed herself to die despite having two babies in her belly. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I'm just so mad at her. Like, she grew up in such a privileged life. I'm just like you have so yeah. much. You, you there's a big problem coming. We need you. Leader. Yeah. <laughs> now, now that you guys say that, I guess I always sort of subconsciously thought that it was Vader that his darkness that sub he subconsciously killed her. Like yeah, the that's, darkness. That's not a bad no, theory. I'm not giving that. So, I'm, I'm not giving that. He was so friend. consumed himself that it wore off on her somehow. No, yeah. he was, I don't know. He was busy being flambéed. I mean, he was too <laughs> busy. What, I that you. that scene at the end of uh, Revenge of the Sith, I, I I sort of felt like that was sort of like there was a, a little connection, like a, a force connection there. That it's possible. I don't know. That's, that's I mean it, it's reality. I, I mean, when you want to really look at the reality of it, they were forced to take these these prequel stories and kind of shoehorn them into the to the timeline that was set up in the original trilogy, sure, sure. knowing that Leia and Luke you know, never really knew their mother or whatever. So they're like, well, we can't have her survive because she's not in the the original trilogy. I don't know. Have I, her yeah, lose the will to sh- live. I don't know that shoehorn is the right way. I think if you create it and then you come to the point where like, well, how does she die? Uh, she wills herself to die. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. You begin with the end in mind, right, Sean? I agree. Or, or Stephen Covey. Begin with the end in mind and figure out what the motivations are. Figure out how it's going to end. Anybody right. can come up with a great idea. It can come up with a great beginning in the middle. It's always the end that pisses everybody off. Yeah, you paint Start yourself this, into a you corner. You do. Yeah. Start with the end and go from there. So I, I think it was sloppy movie making. Well, let's just I throw agree. out one and see what happens. And Oh, right. let's throw out two and see what happens. So let's throw, let's throw out three. Yeah. Now we got to make things happen. Well, we hadn't really thought about it before. Yeah. And I want to give a tip of the hat to Andrew for being on the senator's 
media team for what he just tried to pull right now. <laughs> and that was Damn. grade eight. I mean, no, that that's true. He's I like, am. you know, maybe you have to think that maybe Vader killed her from all that time away. It's <laughs> it's possible. You cannot rule it out. I'm like, you know what, Andrew? You that's can't. a wonderful point. You but valid. you, I can see why you were on the senator's press team. My God, and you belong in the Senate, my friend. Apologist. Yeah, I was, I, I'm always at the podium having to explain everything. <laughs> no, no, guys, she didn't will herself. No, she really wanted to be there. And I have she, to tell you. Yeah. And uh, she had a mother figure. You saw. Anakin's mom. She was. She lived a slave's life yeah. on a horrible thing, and she was there for. You know, she did yeah. everything. She held out. She kept. She stayed up like I knew you'd come for me, Annie. And then she <laughs> waited, and then died. I'm like, she waited. <laughs> you can't take an example from that. You selfish so and so. I think yeah. that maybe one. Maybe we should dedicate an entire episode of no, this yeah, to, 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 to no, 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 holes. no. Not not just Star Wars <laughs> plot holes, but prequel sequel plot. Uh, mm -hmm. Plot holes. Oh, yeah. Obi Wan, why do you have scorch marks on your thing? I'm like, oh, your husband kind of did that. <laughs> you know, the one that you still think is, <laughs> yeah, is doing good. <laughs> By the way, I'm holding your kid. Anyway, yeah, that's you got an ATM on that light bright? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, she, I'm. I'm. I'm uh, she's on a nomination. I, I, if I could, Joe, I'm going to add her to your worst moms list. All right, All right. I will not argue then. Andrew, any uh, good moms that we haven't discussed yet? Yeah, um, I was going to say. I mean. There, there. She's not a hundred percent good because of what happens initially in both films. But uh, Catherine O'Hara in Home Alone, Kate McAllister. Yeah. yeah. Two years in a row, she loses <laughs> one of one of her six or eight kids <laughs> when they're on the way to the airport. First going to Paris, then going to Miami. But after that initial realization that she left Kevin home alone. She is the the number one gung ho person trying to get him back, or yeah, get him back. And uh, yeah. the the husband, uh, John Hurd, he's he's just kind of there. He's like, okay, okay, honey, all right, yeah, I'll go uh, look at the other kids. Uh, and, and she's just manic. Kevin, ah, where's my son? Ah, ah, we, gotta yeah. call, we gotta call the cops. Um, I I love her character in those movies. I thought I think she's hilarious. Yeah, and um. But on what mother would leave a kid <laughs> yeah, behind? I know. See, that's Has why that ever happened. That's why I can't say she's ever. she's not number one on on the good mom list. But throughout the majority of the movie, she is she makes up. She's trying to. Yeah, yeah. She tries the hardest out of the majority of moms in movies to 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 make it right. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, the poor parent of the year award goes two years in a row, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's right. That second movie should have been her coming out of prison first. <laughs> yeah. That's how they should have started, like, child. Or going to man. prison, because, yeah. you know, we forgave you for the first time, because maybe we could see that, but twice? Yeah, the co the cop's like, oh, you lost your kid. The yeah. cop who helps her at the end, find like, this is wonderful. Yeah, ma'am, you're under arrest. You're just yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the, se se in the second one, when they're in Miami talking in the police station, they're like, the cop's like, wait, this has happened before? <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, well, last year. Uh, get the handcuffs. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the Andrew role. I'm going to get up to my PR podium here and say this. When I was a kid, I can't tell you how many times me and my brother would go up to the Kmart desk and go, can you page our mother? Yes. She would, <laughs> yes. This is what she would do. We would be like walking with her in Kmart. She would see the blue light going off, the blue light special. She'd say, go see what the blue light special is. My brother and I would run over there. It would be like wigs or something. We come right back to where she was, and she's gone. And we're going up and down every aisle, and we're like, did she do that on purpose? Like, is that her way of getting rid of us? And eventually, we'd go over to the desk. Will the parents of Carmen Johnson please come to the service desk? That happened so many times. So may I'm going to cut. Uh, Mama McAllister, a little little slack. That was also uh, my fair. my sister and I when we were kids, and my mom would uh, on at least one Saturday a month would take us to the Summit Place Mall, <laughs> and uh, she, and I'd be like like six or seven, and my sister would be she's three years younger than me, three or four. <laughs> she would leave us in the arcade. If you guys remember the Summit Place Mall, there's yeah, this awesome arcade. awesome arcade. Oh yeah, right off the food court. And I would take all the quarters I'd had saved up that week <laughs> and just play the X Men game. It was just, right, yeah, right in the opening. Yeah, right there on the right. And, and wow. I remember uh, one time spending twenty eight dollars in quarters to oh, beat that game. Geez. Wow! But my mom would leave us, and she would go to on the other side of the mall to like 
uh, you Mervin. You get three lives or, per quarter, Andrew. You don't <laughs> walk into the damage. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, there. I mean, there. I have like moderate P- PTSD, <laughs> being like freaking in first grade. Alexa, Alexa, where's mom? Where's yeah. mom? That oh. was a terrifying feeling, and, man. And and that mall was uh, about a million square feet yeah. uh, before they tore it down. So yeah. I just remember walking end to end of the mall trying to find my bus. I'm like getting anxiety hearing that story because I can relate to that, man. Yeah, I did it once to my mom in Oakland Mall when I was a kid. Wow. And then I thought it'd be funny for the sequel when I'm in my 20s to do that at, at, at Great Lakes Crossing and say. Could, would the mother of Nick Amati please come to the and, and, and I'm sure the security guy's like you know we won't stop her when she beats you to death. <laughs> like we're not going to stop her it'll be funny uh, for yeah. us yeah we can all relate uh, is that it for your good moms list uh, I I was just going to briefly touch on because um, I I've seen both the movies but I haven't in a long time uh, the Kill Bill movies with yeah Uma Thurman Ooh. Uh, the Bride AKA I think her name is Beatrix. AKA Black Mamba was was her like code name. Yeah. Um, so she gets shot and left in the head and left for dead while she's pregnant. Yeah. And then she doesn't find out to the se- like the last I don't know how many minutes of the second the, movie of, yeah, the, yeah. of the of the, the sequel that her daughter survived and she's I don't know A like four or five years around. old. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, if we want to talk about a movie that still to this day needs a third movie made. Sure. Yeah. Quentin. <laughs> Have that be your last movie. Yeah, he scrapped his uh, previous plans. Yeah. Let's do it. And I was just looking that up. That movie Bill. came, the second one came out 20 years ago last wow. month. I can't believe wow. it's been that long. Wow. But, like, the last, what, 15, 20 minutes of that movie, when, when she finds out she's alive, it's just like, wow. It it completely, like, turns her 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 whole demeanor. Like, oh. Yeah. So that, that, that always stuck out with me. And like I said, I haven't seen the movie in many years, but. Yeah. I saw it in the theater and just remembered that ending. And yeah, also, one of, one. like most Tarantino movies, one of the great revenge movies of oh, all time. Oh, sure. I mean, oh, easily. I mean, if you think about it, she, great, was, great she was willing, she killed Vivica Fox, who yeah. had a daughter. It's like, well, if, you're, if you yeah. want revenge, yeah. you can come find me. And yeah, when they're in, in that living room fighting, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. George, you got any uh, best movie moms before we go My, the other route? Yeah, I don't know if British miniseries uh, 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 qualifies, but if you ever see the 1995 Pride and Prejudice with Colin Firth and uh, Jennifer Ayla, the mother steals the show. Huh. Oh, we should be mad at our beds? Oh, no! <laughs> so, you know, sitting alone, she says, now, now, come along, kids. And they go outside, and she says, now, don't bother them. Another five minutes will do the trick. <laughs> and she's just, she's she's so perfect and dead on with getting the kids married. That's but, funny. Um, anyway, so that she's one of my favorites, Mrs. Bennett. And um, she's, at, at one point, her daughter runs off with a strange man as, you know, part of Pride and Prejudice. And she says, oh, oh, the flutterings, the palpitations. Oh, <laughs> and you just, you can't. And his hus- her husband walks in and he I can't remember his name. I don't know either of the characters, but he just rolls his eyes. It's perfect. So she's <laughs> she's one of my favorites. Um, Joe Beth Williams from Poltergeist. Oh yeah, I really liked her That's as a, a mother. One, yeah. She's pretty. I well, part of it was I had the the Nick thing going on. I had a major crush on her as a kid because she mm-hmm. was gorgeous. She was thin. And he admitted to smoking pot, so she knew she was a little crazy. And I thought, man, that's so cool. Yeah. But then at some point, she's just so involved in getting her kids that they're staying in this house. Yeah. And Eddie Murphy makes a joke. He's like, you know, white people be staying in houses when it's haunted, you know. And, and he said, black people move into a house, and they say, get wow, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Said, Look at the great neighborhood. Chandler. <laughs> Too bad we can't stay on it. <laughs> and white people stay there. But for, for this one, it worked for me because – her child is caught in the house, yeah, and yeah, they don't the want to give up that connection that exactly. they have with her. They hear her, they feel her, and she cries at one point. And it's yeah. very, it's all of a sudden it steps over from being this crazy kind of a poltergeist to be like, oh, there's a mother's love, there's yeah, an yeah. actual connection. What would you do in this situation? Yeah, I love that one. And then that's great. The other one is um, Mrs. Weasley because she's taking um, care of her own kids. Yeah. I know that you guys maybe like don't don't like Harry Potter as much. No, I I love but the I Harry love Potter the movies, yeah. I love Mrs. Weasley cuz she's taking care of all the kids and she sends she sends the kids with these, you know, hand knitted sweaters. They don't have a lot of money. She's stretching as much part and that was me as a kid. That, that yeah. mother or that was 
I was Ron Weasley or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Some even might argue that I still look like him. But my mother <laughs> was definitely very much Mrs. Yeah. Weasley and, and just trying to stretch a buck. Things made from scratch. Things made at home. Um, taking uh, jeans and fixing them so that you pass them on down to the next. Yeah. Um, I, I, lo- I love that about her. And that was so, that's real to me. Anyway. Well, her, her greatest moment in that entire series, I think, was the last film when she just had enough oh, of goes Bella, Bella Lestrange, Lestrange Helen and, and just Carter. finally takes her out. And I think yes. that's, that might be the only swear word in the entire What does she call franchise. her, a B? Yeah. yeah, it calls her the B word and uh, finally does away with Bella Lestrange. And that was like a stand-up and cheer kind of a moment. Yeah. I remember the, the auditorium taking out cheering. Gold, uh, Gary Oldman, uh, what's his name? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sirius Black. Uh, Sirius, Sirius Black, Black yeah, yeah, yeah. who I thought was like the entire series when when we got when we had that mojo was finally introduced because nobody as a british actor typically has a whole lot of mojo and gary oldman walks in i'm like yeah. there we go that's yeah, yeah, you know yeah. it's it's that's some sex some sexual chemistry some like yeah and nobody else had it yeah nobody nobody in the entire series has like this real attractive like you know spark yeah, yeah. And Gary Oldman walks in, and I'm like, "That's the guy <laughs> that I'm gonna I relate to the most." Yeah. And then when he dies, it's like, "Oh, we're back to you know yeah, the bleached the, out Bella British Lestrange type like, of caused uh, a lot of casualties." So for her to finally get her get what's coming, and I loved her by great. the way. Yeah, I loved her character. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I loved hating. All right, now we're gonna change gears. We're gonna go to worst moms. Now, anytime I bring this topic up with anybody. There's a gold standard when it comes to worse moms. No worse hangers. <laughs> What's wire hangers doing in this closet when <laughs> I told you no wire hangers ever? That's hysterical. That like makes me laugh every time I hear it. Um, that was uh, oh, who's the actress that? Is that, that Mommy Dearest? Yeah, it's Mommy Dearest. The is character it, is uh, uh, Joan, it's Crawford, Joan Crawford. Yes, thank you. But it's played by a um, uh, woman from uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, Faye Dunaway. Faye Dunaway. So F- oh, Faye Dunaway plays right. Joan Crawford in this seen, movie. Yeah, I haven't seen this in years. Yeah, the that's movie right. is based on a, a bi- autobiography written by the daughter who apparently lived this, and apparently Joan Crawford was out of her gourd. And the performance is so over the top, so soap opera that it's become like this classic performance that you don't know whether to laugh or be scared or whatever. But it's when she goes so cross-eyed, when she goes cross, <laughs> she gets so angry. She goes cross-eyed. Yeah. At the time I got watching that, I got sick to yeah. my stomach. I thought, oh my gosh, this is this is next level yeah. psychoticness. Yeah. So most people would agree that Joan Crawford and Mommy Dearest is, is probably the worst movie mommy of all time. And yeah. ironically, Joan Crawford, uh, I think she may have won an Oscar for a movie called Mildred Pierce. And ah. in that movie, she's like this amazing mom who tries to look out for her daughter and does everything for her daughter. And, her and then her daughter just stabs dead. her in the back. It was one of the, Steals I don't want to ruin the her. ending, but yeah. it's one of the most shocking endings i've ever seen in a movie from that time period uh so that's joan crawford playing Mildred this amazing too. mom it's a great movie yeah. in real life she's not such a great mom now i haven't seen mommy dearest in a long long Neither time I, uh, back yeah. in the 80s it was sort of a, a staple on cable where it was on all the time uh do you guys have any memory of mommy dearest or just uh familiar with that scene I'm familiar with the scene. When you played it, it took me a while. I was like, is that Faye? <laughs> and then, yeah, Mommy Dears. No, I, I haven't seen that yeah, since the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at least like. Yeah. She was nuts, man. Wow. I've, I've only heard of the film. I honestly don't know anything about it. Yeah. If anyone who's listening to this, if you've have had any sort of trauma as a child caused by your mom, you might want to steer clear of this movie because it <laughs> might bring back memories that you've been suppressing yeah. mm-hmm. most of your life because <clears throat> this woman is nuts. I mean, and it's raw. The movie yeah. is raw. I mean, it really goes into, and I'm sure there's even more abuses, but it was for its time very shocking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right. I, I mean, you, I didn't think before, you were talking about trauma. Before we came in here, and you, we, I think you were talking about the Mother's Day special, and someone chimed in, like, yeah, so Psycho? 
<laughs> yeah, oh, right. That's right. Norma Norma Bates. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that would be up there because, you know, it's like, for you, mother, this is all for you. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know, in the in the original cycle, the Alfred Hitchcock movie, we never actually get to see the mother. We right. just see uh, Anthony Perkins dressing up as her. We get to in see the a skeleton. later movies, yeah. there's, or there's a series, I there's think, series, that was a prequel. Yeah. Where I think Vera Vera Farminga, I think yeah. was her name, played Norma Bates and a young Norman Bates, she, which is I thought weird. we heard her voice though. We didn't see her. We saw the skeleton at the end, but yeah. I thought we said Norman. Norman. I, was, I think no. that was Anthony Perkins like doing yeah. the voice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was his like oh, split personality. My blown, my there you blown. go. Yeah, there yeah. it is. So, you know, I thought about that, but then I'm thinking, well, we never really do see her, but then when they explored her backstory in the yeah. series you're like oh no they insinuate that her and norman had a relationship i mean not of course unlike lorraine did. and marty so uh <laughs> yeah, just, well yeah. i think very much unlike <laughs> i mean that that was that was pg versus yeah, yeah, right, yeah right. that's no i mean for, uh, for worst moms you know the thing is I, I struggle with coming up with like bad moms. Oh, I had no problem. With really? That. Yeah. Oh, that's you know. So you you should lead off the list because I I mean obviously <laughs> I had one that came to mind right away because I'm it bothered the hell out of me. We've already put it on there, so yeah. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, I have some uh, actresses on this list in multiple roles. Uh, I'm gonna throw out a name. I don't know if this rings a bell. The actress's name is Anne Ramsey. Now, you might not recognize the name, but you will definitely recognize her voice. Holy shit! What a dream I was having! Louis Armstrong oh. was trying to show me! Owen! Owen! Get away from me, you horse's ass! <laughs> <laughs> She's not a woman. She's the Terminator. <laughs> Now, not only was she fantastic in Throw Mama from the Train, she was also in The Goonies. Yes. And, uh, oh, yeah. I was, she was the, the crime Mama leader. Fratelli in The, the crime Goonies. crime leader. She was yeah. wonderful. Now, here's something. You know, I mentioned that sometimes when I do research, I learn new things. I was shocked to find out that for her performance in Throw Mama from the Train, she was Oscar nominated, wow. if you can believe it. Oscar nominated for Throw Mama from the wow. Train. That's crazy to me. Um, but she was this character actress for a long time, played these types of roles in movies. And then about a year after uh, Throw Mama from the Train, she passed, passed away. away yeah. She like That came out in 87, and she passed away like in 88. Um, but, yeah, those two roles in Goonies and Throw Mama – She's just terrifying. The, that just voice, nuts. Yeah, that yeah. voice. It's at it's at the same time horrific and humorous. <laughs> you know who it reminds me of? Listen again. Tell me if this reminds you of anyone. Oh shit! What a dream I was having. <laughs> who does that remind you of? It sounds like Cartman to me. <laughs> look, yes. Picture oh, picture Cartman yes. saying oh, this. Oh shit! <laughs> what a dream I was having. <laughs> hey you guys. It is Cartman. Yeah. And I, I got to wonder now if they borrowed liberally from uh, Ann Ramsey when it comes to Cartman. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, I can't stop seeing it. <laughs> um, some of the other bad moms on my list, uh, we got, uh, well, you got to throw out Betsy Palmer who played Mrs. Voorhees in Friday the 13th, Part yeah. 1. And, you know, that's always that's an interesting trivia question. When you ask the average filmgoer, who was the killer in Friday the 13th? Oh, yeah. Nine mm -hmm. people out of ten would say Jason. Jason was not the killer in Friday the 13th. It correct. was Mama Voorhees uh, re revenging her son. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of an interesting little tidbit. Uh, another name I have on here is uh, played by Angela Lansbury, Mrs. Eleanor Shaw. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Islin, uh, the mother in the Manchurian Candidate, 1962. Oh, okay. She's another one that had a weird relationship with her son, very overprotective of her son. Um, she was a really weird uh, character. Um, Which one was her son? It wasn't Sinatra. Who was it? It wasn't Sinatra. It was the other other guy. Well, but the other guys, yeah. All of these military guys started having these nightmares about uh, which revealed that they had undergone some experiments Chemical in the military. Yeah, yeah. There was a, a, a 
card, like a king of diamonds or queen of diamonds or, or something, saw that, that would trigger yep. a reaction. Yep. And, that's, and that's where we get the term Manchurian Candidate. But yeah, uh, Angela Lansbury, who was only, from what I read, like two or three years older than the actor who played her Wait, son. was Angela Lansbury? Yeah, yeah. She played Boy, this psychotic so nut job in this movie, yeah. And one last name I want to throw out is uh, uh, Frances Fisher, Ruth D. Witt Bucator in Titanic. Uh, God, she was so awful when they were evacuating the ship. And yeah. she's like, you know, you're not going to put any second-class people in this lifeboat with us, are you? And it's like, jeez, that boat's going down, and you have no empathy for the people that are on that boat. Um, and she just wanted to push her daughter into this arranged marriage so that she was taken care of. And was not happy when it all fell apart. And she was just a evil, evil character in Titanic. So, so that's kind of my list of uh, worst movie moms. Any other names you want to throw out for worst movie mom? No, worst but, movie moms. And like I said, I I struggle because I'm trying to find like, oh, who's who's a who's a terrible mom? And movie wise, TV wise, you know, you can find plenty of them. Uh, Malcolm in the Middle, if you're going to TV, is my favorite <laughs> yeah. mom of all time. Yeah. She's so good. So, so good. Oh, well, if we go to TV. Yeah, I was going to say, if we go to TV, we can. Carol Brady. Lorda Evans. Mama Partridge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mark, Mama uh, Partridge. Mark Simpson. Uh, yeah. Mark, Mark Simpson, Simpson, one of the yes, all there you time go. great moms. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I mean, there's a little off track here, but bringing up The Simpsons. Do you remember back in the 80s? No, it had to have been in the 90s. I think it was George Bush. Uh, the the senior had H-W. gone on TV yeah, yeah, yeah. and said, you know, we we want families to be more like the Waltons and less like the Simpsons. <laughs> and the Simpsons creators were like, what did we do? Like, you watch the show. They go to church. Like, they're it's not r- like a bad family. Like, Bart's, you know, a little off his rocker and Homer's a screwball. But <laughs> And Marge like, is trying why? to hold it all together. Yeah. She, she's long-suffering. She's she, she stays married to him. She looks great into yeah. her 40s, presumably. <laughs> 30s, maybe, 40s, whatever. She's 41 for 25 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> They've been on so long that they keep changing their origin story about how they met. <laughs> like, early on in the series, they met when they went to go see The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And then yeah. later on, they do a flashback episode where it's like the mid-90s or something. But, yeah, yeah I don't know why Bush decided to go after The Simpsons. He and then obviously he got an has episode, never seen it. An and episode. they put him in okay. the episode later. That was like, oh, yeah. did they That's really? right. When he moved when, when they moved, That, when that moved. was why he lost to Clinton. It ah. wasn't. It wasn't because he had he raised taxes. It was because <laughs> he was. The don't Simpsons. mess with Simpsons. America's they number one fan. Yeah. Oh, you, know, you go after the Simpsons, you pay the consequence. Yeah. When no, but when it comes to bad t- uh, bad TV moms, like as far as like bad personalities and characters, then you know you got Game of Thrones. You could just go through that list. Oh, like, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Yeah. You know, starting with seriously, seriously and going, yeah. but yeah, when we're talking about bad mo- moms and movies. I struggle. I honestly got like I'm, I, I'm relying on your list. Like when you say, "I'm like, yeah, yeah, that that would count." I I, yeah. completely, I completely forgot about the Titanic mom because yeah. I was so focused on Rose and her murderous ways. <laughs> I, I got to be honest with you. The, the Titanic mom is it's. Mm, I don't think of her as bad because her character wasn't it. It, it I've seen that so many times where you're going to marry somebody that we choose you for. Okay, I think one out of ten movies has got to be, well, we want you. I mean, it just, yeah. I've yeah. seen it so many times that, that her being an evil person is like, all right, you're the evil person, whatever. Just let's, I'm going to go get some popcorn while she does her thing because I don't <laughs> care at all about her character. You know what, there's a, there's a moment in Titanic, I think it's such a great metaphor, and I don't know if James Cameron came up with this or what, but the scene where Rose is like holding on to a bedpost and her mom is pulling her into this corset and, like, pulling on the string. Yeah. Ah! And as she's talking about, you know, our father or her husband died with everything, left us nothing. This is our chance to stay among the elite. And as she's talking, she's tightening this corset. And to me, that's so symbolic of what Rose is facing, this this cage, this tightening. I, I just wow. thought that was such a great scene yeah. that as she's – Telling nice. her why she needs to marry Cal. She's pulling the strings on this corset. I, yeah. I just thought it was a great moment. Great also scene. kind of a backhanded slap at her dad. Like, I went, I probably married him, and he probably wasn't the greatest person, but <laughs> we got money out of it. Yeah. You're going to do the same thing too, child. Right, right. And then you threw away the diamond. <laughs> she learned you nothing. Know, now, one character that popped into my head when I was compiling this list for bad moms, and I'm like, wait a second, she wasn't a mom. 
But Kathy Bates in misery, <laughs> she she is it's, so nuts, man. Yeah, she's she's you supposed know. to be a, a caretaker for uh, James Conn, who's an yeah. injured. Yeah, I oh, I never saw the gosh. beginning of the movie. I don't remember how he got injured. But it was just a, it was a car crash. It was, a, it was, a, it was okay. snowing, and he took a turn too fast and tumbled. And he down just a happened hill. to be. A, a, a fan I was rescued him. I was yeah. super young when I saw like the last half of that movie. Way younger than I should have been. I'm like, oh, yes, the this hobbling is, scene. This is, is oh. terrifying. Why am I watching this? Yeah. You know what's interesting is I read the book Misery before the movie came out. Is that Stephen King? Stephen yeah. King. Yeah. And, and he's written like 600 books. Yeah, right. No, he's just so prolific. <laughs> well, some of the stuff that uh, Kathy Bates' character uh, does to the author in the book is is supposed to be worse than what we see on screen. But I think they sort of under underestimated the audience because when she hobbled uh, James Conn's character, to me, watching that scene unfold was so much worse than what happened in the book, which was basically her sawing off his foot, sawing yeah. off his leg. And in the book, that was so horrific. And you're like, oh, no. In the movie, when she like stands there with that sludge hammer and she puts that two by four between his ankles, oh. to me that That's was horrific. infinitely you, worse than what I read in the book. That the book basically like when you read the book, I'm like, oh, and you say like, oh, it's, is this about to happen? Like, wait, wait, that's not a saw. What are you doing? Oh, and then the movie's <laughs> like, here, hold my beer. And you're like, oh, what, what, what's about to happen right now? Oh, I got phantom pain in my ankles. I was like, oh, what's happening right now? <laughs> yeah, pain. this is not right. Why are my ankles hurting? This is this is barbaric. <laughs> So, yeah, so technically, even though she wasn't a mother, she did have, like, she tried to take care of him, and it just escalated and escalated. I have a oh. Kathy Bates nomination but as a real mom, and even though she, you can say she redeemed herself at the end, but with the water boy. That's true. Oh, yeah, Bob, yeah. She raised yeah. Bobby Boucher. Yeah. I mean, she <laughs> put that boy wrong into his I've 30s. Seen that, years, but yeah, seen that girl is the devil. Bobby Boucher. Yeah, she held, she's like, I didn't want to lose him. I'm like, so you were basically trying to raise him to become a psycho. <laughs> he th thank God he finally like found that last second to get out. Otherwise, my God. I totally forgot about that. That's a that's a great nomination. Yeah, yeah. All right, any other uh, Bad Mom nominations before we wrap yeah, up? Yeah, um, I'm going to give you the name and you give me the movie. Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, uh, she... Catcher in the Rye. No, not Catcher in no. the Rye. Um, I'm thinking of something else. It's where she Timothy a... Hutton. Oh, that's, Donald um, Sutherland. Oh, uh, I don't, ordinary people. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was such a painful movie for me to mm. see. I think it was was it uh, Robert Redford's directing deb debut could, or somebody be, somebody's yeah, directing yeah. debut, but she she just she loses her favorite son and she blames the other son. Ah, and she's not she's not trying to be rude, but she just can't bring in her bring herself to love Timothy Hutton, mm. and it's just expertly acted by everybody you wow. i just love donald sutherland because donald sutherland can play the buffoon and in that movie he was perfect he yeah. was not mash at yeah. all he was a hundred percent you know he, yeah. he was so good and, and mary tyler moore who you know for the longest time was america's sweetheart on exactly. tv exactly played yeah. against take on that kind of a role that's pretty exactly. awesome played against type but she's mm. just she's just so disconnected from her kid that you just you hate her for that yeah. and he hates her and he can't figure anything out so judd what's his name from taxi Who's oh, Judd Hirsch. Hirsch. Judd Hirsch, yeah, who's, yeah. The, who's the therapist, is is just great. And you find that he's more of a father or a parenting figure than either uh, of the parents. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, See, I, I it love up. that. I blocked it up because you're right. It's Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> it's, it's, you don't even she, think She's of her not throwing little... her hat up yeah. in the middle of you know, the street in New York. She's no, she's Or she's from the evil. Dick Van Dyke show. You don't think of her as a villain. You, you just no. go, and you're like, wait, wait, she's, a, yeah, now, now it's coming back. Well, there we go. Now I got another scab <laughs> ripped off, and I have another. <laughs> now, George, I'm going to correct you here. It wasn't uh, New York. It was uh, Minneapolis. Oh. And the reason I know that is because I stood on the very same street corner and threw a beret in the air. So You did? I did. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. I was thinking, I always just assumed that was New York, but no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, all the opening sequence was all shot in real locations in Minneapolis. Oh, I, I, I went up the same escalator that she comes up, and I found all those filming locations. So. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, so we're going to wrap up on Mary Tyler Moore, and uh, that's pretty much it. Guys, thanks again. This was thank a great you. One. That was no, such uh, fun. Happy yes, Mother's you. Day My to all. My smiler muscles are once again <laughs> painfully. I hope all your moms out there have a great Mother's Day. Yes. Breakfast in bed, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this podcast, and we will see you again in two weeks. Come. 
to the movies Watch Charlie Chaplin And put some sunshine into your day Forget the hard times Come to the movies And try to laugh your troubles away